Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Fish. Fish. Oh, he's off. That was such a big one. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. All right. Well, good morning. It's uh, mid-September here on the Brule. I'm just getting my waders on. It's about 6.30 in the morning and uh, the river is really low right now. I was kind of hoping we'd get some rain here but it doesn't look like any in the forecast. The temps are great. It was about 38 degrees this morning. So we know the water temps are down there where the fish need them to run, but we haven't gotten any rain, so that's not ideal. Um, the water is going to be really low and clear, but I know there's fish in the river. Just we just haven't gotten that big run yet. <laughs> so see what we can find here today, and let's get after it. Going to be targeting mostly today deep holes. Uh, faster runs with some ripples to kind of hide them and then anywhere there's brush or cover is going to be another spot um, You're most likely not going to find them hanging in shallower runs today because of the low clear water. So That's kind of what we're looking for on a day like this and then I'm just running that spinner Slightly upstream and then coming across stream and letting it swing down through the hole and usually they hit as it's coming back out of the hole so Fish on. Got one on here. Oh boy. Yeah, there we go. That is exactly what we're here for. Mr. Coho, right there. Hit the uh, number, looks like a number four, uh, Blue Fox Vibrax. Not a huge coho, but my wife's going to be happy. We got some dinner anyway. Uh, that was only maybe my sixth cast here. And um, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be running spinners. Kind of aggressive approach, and then I'll probably take some more casts with the uh, live bait to slow it down. See what else we can get in that hole, and then I'll move on. But as you can see, that fish came from the deepest part of the hole which is to be expected in this uh, lower water and that was on a uh, blue fox super vibrax number four small smaller coho but a good eater um, they will eat a big spinner um, I'm using a medium rod here uh, Chippewa River custom rod six foot eight and um, I think I've got 12 pound uh, leader on here you want heavy enough leader to Make sure you can haul them out of the sticks and stuff if they get going on you, especially big steelhead. And then I've got a um, 15 pound braid uh, spooled up on the reel. So I didn't need it for that fish, but if you hook a big steelhead on this, you're gonna be glad you got that heavier setup. Later in the day when it clears up and the sun comes up, I'm probably not even gonna throw spinners anymore. Um, especially in this clear water, we'll switch to something more natural. For now, they're not going to see it in this low light, so. Oh, I missed one. Damn. Well, I made one more switch, and I switched to a copper. Maps more of a natural color, and I got smashed on that, and I missed them. So, tried a few more casts with nothing, so now I'm going to go down to live bait. And oftentimes slowing down going to a, a more natural presentation you'll pick off another fish or two so here's my rig for drifting crawlers I'm going with a long chunk between my crawler and my sinker probably 20 inches just to keep that sinker away from the bait burying a hook in that crawler so you can't really see the hook 
up at the head there and I'm just gonna bounce that through. Well, I only picked up one coho down there and I had one more hit. So I think we're gonna try another spot here. I just drove to another spot on the river and uh, hopefully we'll find some more fish here. There's a bunch of guys, but hopefully we can kind of get around that and uh, see what we can find, so. Fish on. Nice little brown. I just had a little plastic egg and a crawler on there. Nothing huge, but nice little guy. Well, it was a pretty morning on the Brule. I'm heading out. I only had a few hours to fish this morning, but managed one decent coho, lost one, or missed one, and uh, caught one little brown. So, all in all, pretty decent morning considering the clear water and the, uh, the sunny conditions. So, hopefully I can get a day where it's nice and cloudy, rainy, uh, hopefully the rain brings the river up a little bit and pushes some more fish in But there's some fish in there. It's just tough fishing right now But at least you guys see how I fish it when the water is low and clear And uh, definitely low light is your best bet uh, That those coals I caught basically right away this morning and then it was pretty slow after that so Try to uh, take advantage of the low light conditions in morning and evening when you're fishing in low clear water and Next time we come up, hopefully it'll be a little bit better conditions. So stay tuned for part two. Hopefully it will be soon. All right, I'm going to be, meet my buddy Kyle here in Hayward, and we're going to go hit the rule for some steelhead and maybe some cohos. We'll see what we can catch. But uh, there's some fish in the river. It's really cold. It's 25 degrees right now, but it's supposed to warm up to close to freezing today. And uh, hopefully we can find some fish. Um, it rained a couple weeks ago and we've had some snow and uh, definitely pushed some fish into the river finally so it's pretty rough going early with the water so low but uh, hopefully we can get into some today just gonna fish some uh, slower bait and uh, see what we can do Well, we made it to the river. This is my buddy Kyle, and uh, we got to our first spot here. We'll probably try to get some uh, spawn up next to some trees here and see if we can get some fish out of the cover on the edges. And we're fishing a little slower water here today. And uh, water's pretty cold. I'm guessing it's probably upper 30s, maybe even mid 30s. So we're gonna be fishing slow and uh, using some some spawn probably to start here maybe some yarn flies so it's pretty cold for October but the fish are in the river so we're gonna give her a shot fish on fish on all right barber down oh, it is off. oh that was a nice fish too Kyle I just changed my rig downsized a little bit first drip maybe second drift through there Right down towards the tail out of the hole, hooked a nice fish. Unfortunately, I lost them before we could show them to you, but seeing a fish or hooking a fish is a step in the right direction. Fish on! Oh my goodness. I might have to net this for you. Oh, he's going. That's a nice fish. You've been screwed. That's a beautiful fish. That's too. a really nice fish. Cool. That is an awesome, awesome fish. Probably 26, maybe 25. So that was super cool. That fish. We were just walking down this long run, and there's a little bucket, just a small little spot where there's some deeper water, and it was actually my first drift through there. Float sank. Yelled fish on and uh, 
Caleb made an awesome net job coming down the river. So that was an awesome fish and a really awesome fish for this little river. Fish on. Oh, a little brown. <laughs> oh, so fun. Oh, it's a little rainbow. A little rainbow on the fly rod. Hit the yarn fly. Even though that was a little fish, it sure was fun on the fly rod. Can't beat that. Feeling that line just tap, fish on. I've actually caught a couple in the fast water below here in the spring too. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my buddy Weldon one time we were fishing it. It was he was pretty new to steelhead fishing. He hooked one in there and I mean it just it just left. Completely spooled him in like fifteen seconds. <laughs> I'll never forget. I hear him hollering, I come around the corner. And he's just like, I got one, I got one. He's all excited and all of a sudden he starts to look kind of concerned. And then all of a sudden he wasn't excited anymore. He's like, what do I do? <laughs> I'm like, you gotta follow. He's like, I can't, there's too many rocks. I was like, well, stop reeling. He might turn around, snap, spooled. And then here we are with no extra line. <laughs> he had to walk all the way back with no rod. That looked like the perfect drift. It wasn't bad. I felt like it was good. I'm just starting the car out and kind of working my way in. Push on. Hold it back. Hold it back. Oh, why even use the knife? Pretty little brown. Hit that spawn bag. Might be another one in there yet. So I'm just using a number eight octopus and kind of burying that right down in the in the spawn. And that's just cured with Potsky's uh, borax fire and it's kept in the freezer since last year's, but it's still pretty much mint. So. Nice brown. Look at the big brown. Good. Stay up here, buddy. Stay up here. We don't want you going downstream like Kyle did. Oh, that's a beautiful brown. I'm just feathering my jag. I'm keeping a finger on it just in case it takes off on me. But now that I'm downstream of them, I feel a lot better. As long as I can stay downstream of them here, it should be good. Awesome fish. There we go. Beautiful lake run brown right there. Hit that spawn bag right after the little guy did. They were in the same run. Really dark fish too. Looks like it spawned out. I'll let that thing go. Get him back in the water.
I had a couple colors tied up. Chartreuse, pink. I'm gonna go with a blue. Up on there. release they're all fun <laughs> you know that you know that those little ones gotta be behind a big female yep yeah whenever you see a lot of small fish in one run there's typically some eggs being laid I got a shallow up six inches that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize about fishing streams for uh, Great Lakes fish, I guess, trout, salmon, steelhead, whatever, is moving your bobber by six inches could mean fish or no fish. And I know he's in there in the morning. At least I'm fairly confident of it. Yep. And a big part of the reason I want to go hang the stand is because I want to check the camera. Oh, yeah. But I just, I'm going to have to find time in the middle of the day to do it. Is it a public land, Buck? Fish. Fish. Oh, he's off. That was such a big one. Oh. That was such a big one. That oh was. God. That thing was huge. Oh. That was. That had. Oh my goodness. That was a tank. Did you see him? I saw one flash and it was big. That was probably the hardest fighting thing I've had on this rod ever. Oh man. Oh my. That was. I. I just went to reel my rod up because I was, felt like I was at the end of my drift. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, he sank it, ran at me, and I thought I was just reeling a stick in, and then he turned, and that was a big fish. Well, we're wrapping it up here today. Uh, we ended up catching a couple nice fish, and uh, Kyle lost a couple really nice fish, so we were hooking them, um, kind of off and on all day using a couple different techniques. You know, Kyle was using mainly a uh, float fishing system there with the center pin. And I was using my spinning setup, like a nine foot spinning rod, just drifting, spawn, and, and uh, some yarn. It's pretty good for fighting ice on the guides and snow and the, the elements here in October. <laughs> yeah. So it was a good day. Hopefully we can make it back up here one more time before the season closes, but. Until next time, get hooked up and we'll see you back on the river, hopefully.